We'll look at uh, the revelation of Jesus Christ in chapter 14. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him an hundred forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps, and they sung as it were a new song before the throne, and before the four beasts. And the elders, and no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty and four thousand, which were redeemed from the earth. Now these are Jewish believers here. 144,000, that's 12,000 from every tribe, from the 12 tribes of Israel, uh, the Jews there. Uh, these are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. Now these things will happen Again, in the tribulation period, in the seven-year tribulation period, it will come upon this earth after the Lord Jesus Christ has come down into the air to take the believers to be forever with himself. And this is why it's so urgent to get right with God now, today, right now. Five seconds time may be too late. We need to understand the urgency of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The urgency of your eternal salvation that can only take place if you come in repentance toward God. That's a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner and then place your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your soul will be saved. This is what God wants for you this morning, my friend, that he would forgive you of all of your sins. And this is only possible through the once for all sacrifice of Jesus Christ upon the cross and your right reaction to that. You see, you can uh, just disregard it and say, I don't care, it's all right. But the point is this, if you do that, you are still on your way down to hell and God does not want to have to judge you, but he will if you die outside of Christ. Without Christ as your savior, you're in big trouble with God Almighty. He must judge sin, otherwise he wouldn't be God. And these things are pretty obvious. Um, you know, no one's going to get away with anything. We must understand that. Even the things that we do in the dark, we, you know, when we think no one's watching us, no one's seeing us, God is up with it all. God is seeing absolutely everything. Now it says here, These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. In other words, wherever he goes. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile. Well, that means craftiness or sneakiness. Uh, for they are without fault before the throne of God. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God, and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come. And worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the third angel followed um, them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast uh, and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or on, in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone, and notice this, in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb, that is, in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ, the sacrifice, the one who could have been their saviour, and yet in this day, he'll be their judge. And there's going to be, uh, when I say judge, I mean the one who judges and then has the people that are judged at that great white throne judgment, cast into the lake of fine broomstone where there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. But just remember, 
uh, they're going to be in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb, the Lord Jesus Christ. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. See, if you die without Christ, there is everlasting punishment awaiting you. And God does not want you to go into that everlasting punishment, my friend. It's not worth it. God has made the way of escape through his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, dying on the cross, being crucified for you and for me. And if we reject that or neglect that once for all sacrifice, we're in big trouble, as I said, with God Almighty. And we will be paying for our own sins for all eternity and they'll never be paid for. Now, that's a very dangerous situation you're in, my friend. If you're in this world and you've never been saved, you need to get saved now. You need to come to Christ now. Now is the day of salvation. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. And they have no rest. Look at this. And they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast. And as I said, this will be in the tribulation time. It's not now, but it will be. Who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Remember that mark? 666. People make jokes about these things, but they're a reality, my friend. You know, people make jokes about hell, and they'll have a party and booze on with their mates and all that sort of stuff and have a barbie. load of rubbish. The devil loves it when people speak about things like that. He makes, you know, the devil wants people to make fun of it and just laugh it off and joke it off and make, make out that it doesn't even exist. But it does exist, my friend. We see in Luke chapter 16, the rich man died and went to hell and lift up his eyes being in torments, my friend. This is a dangerous place. You don't want to go there. You know, if somebody wants to go there is out of their mind. There's something wrong with them in their head. There's no way that you want to go there. It's eternal torment in the lake of fine broomstone. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labours, and their works do follow them. And I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. And another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar which had power over fire and crowd, uh, cried with a loud voice, sorry, cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle saying, thrust in thy sharp sickle and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth for her grapes are fully ripe. And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. And the winepress was trodden without the city and blood came out of the winepress even unto the horses' bridles by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvellous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, that is the 666. 
stand on the glass uh, on the sea of glass having the harps of god and they sing the song of moses the servant of god and the song of the lamb saying great and marvelous are thy works lord god almighty just and true are thy ways thou king of saints who shall not fear thee o lord and glorify thy name for thou art only art holy for all nations shall come and worship before thee for thy judgments are made manifest and after that i looked and behold the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was open and the seven angels came out of the temple having the seven plagues clothed in pure and white linen and having their breasts girded with uh, golden girdles and one of the four beasts gave unto the seven angels seven golden vials full of the wrath of god who liveth for ever and ever and the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of god and from his power and no man was able to enter into the temple till the seven plagues of the seven angels were fulfilled. Uh, Revelation of Jesus Christ in chapter 16. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his image, that is, those who have received that mark, the 666. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man, and every living soul died in the sea. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters, and they became blood. And I heard the angel of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art, and wast, and shall be, because thou hast judged thus. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat, and blasphemed the name of God, which had power over these plagues. And they repented not to give him glory. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness. And they gnawed their tongues for pain and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores and repented not of their deeds. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the river Euphrates and the water thereof was dried up that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of demons, working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world, to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked, and they see his shame. And he gathered them together into a place called, in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. This was the battle of Armageddon, obviously. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake such as what was not since men were upon the earth so mighty an earthquake and so great and the great city was divided into three parts and the cities of the nations fell and great babylon came in remembrance before god to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath and every island fled away and the mountains were not found and there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven 
every stone about the weight of a talent, and men blaspheme God because of the plague of the hail, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. And I wouldn't be, want to be left behind in any of those, that seven year tribulation period, my friend. What about you? Will you be left behind? You need to be saved, my friend. You need to come to faith in Christ. You need to come in repentance toward God, as I've said, that is a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner and then place your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your soul will be saved. Remember, in whom we have redemption, through his blood even, the forgiveness of sins. Heaven or hell, what will it be for you? It's all determined by what you do with the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried. But praise God, the third day he rose again according to the scriptures. Are you saved? Are you ready for heaven? Or will you go to hell at the moment of death? It's up to you. Well, if you've understood this message, I hope you have. And if you're interested in it, look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you. Thanks for listening. Have a great day.